Good morning, uh, Sam Kele. Well, news just in that uh, Batabele Gamine has joined a list of, the, of those um, MPs who've resigned from the benches of the ANC in Parliament. Indeed, but then a very good morning to you and to the listeners at home. Yes, uh, Batabele Gamine has joined the ever-growing list of the African National Congress and members of Parliament and former members of the executive who have uh, thrown in the towel and tended in their resignation as members of uh, the Assembly of uh, or members of uh, Parliament. ANCA has seen a letter, which is an eight-long uh, document, uh, going around saying that uh, she has decided uh, to pull out or to resign as a representative of the African National Congress in uh, the National Assembly. She cites and goes into detail about uh, the controversial CPS uh, contract, uh, which uh, belonged to SAFA, which distributes uh, social grants to uh, poor South Africans, and how she uh, sent that particular di- disagreements or uh, engagements of, uh, the, of the SAFA system to the then Minister of Public Enterprises or Minister of Finance, Pravin Gordon, to seek advice on how to deal with it. She goes into detail on how some ANC leaders are loved by the media and some are basically vilified and demeaned within the public domain, yet those whom the media loves and are perceived to be doing right things within society are the ones who have shares in these institutions that uh, do business with government. We have spoken to the ANC Women's League Secretary General, Maduba Minejo, who did confirm to ENCA that indeed she did get a report from the former Minister of Social Development and Women's League President, Batabile Olive Zamini, that she did resign yesterday as a member of Parliament. Okay, so we're going to have to, to really see what more reaction is going to come out of that. It looks like, some get a very brief, it looks like uh, uh, we should be expecting uh, more MPs who, to, to leave. I mean, this letter that you're referring to that she has written also, I understand, refers to the Integrity Commission. Is this a fallout from that commission's report? Yeah, you would expect that Batabila would uh, have uh, great experiences with uh, the issue of the ANC's Integrity Commission. She was part of the 23 names that uh, were, go- were meant to go before the Integrity Commission. If I'm not mistaken, only 18 uh, only arrived to speak to the Integrity Commission and others didn't arrive. So she did have experiences. She did have issues of how her... Um, issues within the Department of Social Development, within the shenanigans, within FASA, with DELT, and how she was perceived by the public domain and how uh, she perceived the media to be specifically dealing with her saying at some points in time that uh, there is a media agenda against her. There are some ANC leaders who are loved by the media and there are some who are vilified by the media. So she did have uh, grievances, particularly around those issues. You remember when uh, our erstwhile colleague uh, who tried to speak to her, uh, particularly around the Sasa debacle, uh, she basically walked away, didn't answer the questions. You'd remember how our colleague Masi Khorashaka uh, tried to pose questions to her where she basically said no comment about two or three times. So that was the character of Batabile Damini. She did not want to speak about contentious issues surrounding her tenure, particularly at social development or surrounding certain comments or remarks she had made. For instance, you'd remember those remarks uh, she made about those whom are perceived to be abusing women, alleging all sorts of things at the time and saying that uh, they too have skeletons, all of them have small and skeletons, and those skele- small and skeletons will come tumbling out of the closet if they were to speak. So she did sound as if she has a woman with a lot of ammunition or dirt on other ANC leaders, which she can release at any point in time. But she did take huge exception to how she and how us in the media fraternity were dealing with her, particularly asking her tough questions surrounding the debacle of CPS, the Concord ruling, and also the debacle surrounding the rolling out of social grants to poor South Africans, particularly, which fell in line with her department whilst she was still the Minister of Social Development and how the poor and the elderly community would go by without getting those social grants at times. They would be heist as uh, those monies were being sent out to to then the CPS uh, contract came about and how that contract was awarded, which also ended up being a a litigation issue and going to court and court ruling that that contract that belonged to CPS be nullified and set aside 
and that the time frame be uh, put in place uh, to make sure that that contract is phased out and a new contract is tenderized and a new contract is brought forward, which came about the biometric system, which was meant to be rolled out uh, in conjunction with the Department of Home Affairs, with, uh, with, with also using Postbank, which belongs to the post office, and that is the contract that they were negotiating after the Concord ruling on the CPS contract. Yeah, Sam Gale Masego, thank you for that background. The news, though, is that Batabi Lamin is no longer an MP. She's the latest in a list of former cabinet ministers who didn't make it to President Ramaphosa's cabinet to leave the benches of parliament. We'll have to really further analyze as the day goes to that eight-page letter that uh, we've, you, 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 ENC, as you say, has seen, and to see exactly what other issues is Batabile Jamini highlighting when she resigned. Another ANC MP, a former cabinet minister, no longer a member of parliament.